Gentlemen, it has come to that time for the speeches. So, first of all, I'm going to hand you over. First of all, can we just have a little bit of hush, ladies and gentlemen, please? I know there's a hell of a lot of people in here. Come on. It speaks time, ladies and gentlemen. Can we have some quiet, please? Can we all hear it? First of all, Father Green. First, I'd like to thank obviously everyone for coming today. Um, can I crack on now? Um, I would first like to apologise to Vicky for taking nearly 18 years to marry her. But it's finally here and we are married. I think we look absolutely beautiful and love you more than you know. We've had our ups and downs over the years, and no matter the good or the bad, I know one thing, we have all stood by each other. You're the best wife and mother I could have ever dreamed to have. You take looking after me to another level. You're an amazing mother to our two fantastic, boisterous, meddling, rowdy, rambunctious, and at times a lot of work, beautiful children, Ronnie and Reggie. Um, <laughs> Scott. Oh, and Scott, if you didn't know, is the son that once said, Dad, I love pigs. Do you really, son? Why is that? Because they taste of bacon. <laughs> um, when me and Vicky first met, I couldn't afford, afford to ring Vicky, and I didn't have a phone, so I used to throw bottle lids in her open window. <laughs> and oh, was it stalking her? She was the girl living next door. Now, when I live with my sister, obviously, yeah. um, in open show, <laughs> it didn't take too long to cement the relationship as I moved in with Vicky after a couple of weeks, and nearly 18 years, two kids, two houses, a flat, many years of hard work, tears and happiness, I can safely say you are the best thing that has ever happened to me, and our boys, and we love you to the moon and back. I've got to go right, quick, right, quick through this really quick. I know that our mums will be looking down on us today. As always, I'd be very proud of how far we have come together. I'm proud of our boys, and I definitely, definitely know they would have adored our sons. The thanks. I would like to thank Janet, Diane, Roy, Graham, Gary, Alison, and Vicky's dad. Big boy! Big Roy, that one. Um, for all the support and help over the years, we appreciate everything you've done for us. So thank you, we love you all. Thank you very, very much. Um, thanks also to Tanya, Sam. Lindsay and Reese for their help and everything they've done in the wedding. Honestly, Reese and all of them have just said been a massive, massive help, so thank you very, very much for that. Honestly. Um, thanks to Graham and Dave for being the ushers. To Nicola and Donna for, be, for their support in the wedding and being bridesmaids. To both the flower wheels, Jasmine and Jasmine. Beautiful. The page boys, Brody and Scott. Mm. Uh, uh, thanks to my Auntie Marie, Auntie Hazel, and Uncle Chris that have come all the way down from Dundee. It means a lot of you all coming this way, so thank you. The sister, and my niece is here, I love you. Um, I'm sorry if I forgot anybody. And I would like you all to raise your glass to my beautiful, amazing wife, Vicar. 
I would now like to hand you over to any kids in the room. <laughs> no ones. Um, to the Chris and Aaron, the best men. Thank you very much. Who's going first? I'm the first of Jeff's last minute replacement best men. Second best. <laughs> first, of, let's give the bride and the bridesmaid a round of applause. <laughs> Honestly, you all look amazing. I think I fancy you more today than I ever have on my last day. <laughs> Brody? Yeah. Scott? Outside. Scott's He's outside, outside. okay. <laughs> Uh, they both look amazing, they are a credit to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Except, for Tuesday, <laughs> except for Tuesday night in the rehearsal. They were our little shits, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> to the flower girls, uh, Jasmine and... Jasmine. 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 Yeah. They both look beautiful. I was so happy, honestly, when Jeff asked me to be one of his best men. Oh, sorry, he's Usher. No, not best man. <laughs> Ten years of hard work being his mate had finally paid off. I was happier honestly still when he said Chris would be doing it alongside me. I thought to myself, me and Chris, we had come here, stand about, point people to the seats, pretend to be really important, and eat a free meal back here on Vicky and Jeff, and have a few drinks, and laugh at the speeches that everyone had put together, and cringe if they weren't that good. And now an old brown is in my role, <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> So just over a month ago, when I was driving in my car, listening to my Usher CD, training for today, <laughs> and saw that it was Jeff, I answered without hesitation. I said, you alright mate? No me, sir. Oh, what's up? Oh, I can't believe I'm about to do this. In my head I thought, this nobody is about to sack me, is this Usher? <laughs> when he asked me to be his best man, I was made up. Honestly, not only because it's a great honour and I've not been sacked, I was made up because he didn't ask me for a borrow. <laughs> Every day you get to keep all your money is a good day. Now I first met Jeff ten years ago at the gas. I was a twenty year old kid, I hadn't been taught any life lessons, and on my first day I was ignored by everybody. Everybody. I couldn't even get a conversation out of the cleaners. <laughs> I went, to my I went on my dinner and ate alone in the canteen and all I heard was Alright mate, where are you from? <laughs> that was my first encounter with Jeff Or oh, double F Jeff, I was a, as I was encouraged to call it <laughs> Luckily for me though, it wasn't my last That day was also good because I got to meet his much better half, the kid She was on her first day back off maternity leave after having Brody. So, Scott, I am their second son, sorry. <laughs> we had lunch. Jeff told me some ghetto stories about Mount Road or some shit. <laughs> what are you saying, Jeff? <laughs> and after taking me under, in, under his wing, he insisted on giving me a lift home. I was hesitant. He had a going that way anyway. <laughs> Off I'll go. And after that day, I insisted that he take me there and back most days. <laughs> yeah, mate, you're going that way anyway. <laughs> I think that's when Jeff realised he had me for life. Now, over the ten years, it's not been plain sailing for me and Jeff. We have had many of the arguments. <laughs> One point, we were to the front, <laughs> from cakes at work, face to face, ready to go at it. I don't, I can't quite remember what started it, do I'm glad I finished it. <laughs> he still insists that he would bang me out, as he would say. <laughs> me and him both know what happened that day outside of work. And what happened in his living room on Tuesday. He started giving it the big one. I put him in a bit of a chokehold. Tap like a little bitch. <laughs> 
after that at the front of work, we didn't speak for a couple of days. But like always, give me a little look, blow me a kiss, and it'll all be forgotten about. If not, Vicky would no doubt intervene. Jeff would say sorry just to save himself on the earache. And I'd say sorry just because I was scared I wouldn't get any homemade meals from Vicky. Or ch chocolate fudge cake to die for. Also, over the, over the years, we've had a few nights out. I'd heard legendary tales of Jeff and his drinking. I had 17 JD and Coke's me. I weren't even pissed, honestly. I had like, high expectations. Now, I'm not the biggest drinker in here. There's a few of you that can test to that. <laughs> but I've never met a bigger lightweight in my life than Jeff. <laughs> Honestly, two blue wickets, he was done. To be fair to him, they were the bigger size blue wickets, but he is a lightweight. He'll probably tell you that I had two Budweiser's and fell asleep in front of his fire. Which is true, which is true, but I am a lightweight. Even two weeks ago when he stagged him, that's enough about the stag do. <laughs> if anyone wants the details about the stag do, ask some of the supposed 65 people that were there. <laughs> now, a few bad jokes aside, being one of your best men today is one of the biggest honours of my life, honestly. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to cry. You got this. Uh, it's only second to Heather, who can't be here today. She's not dead, don't worry. She's not on holiday. She's not on holiday with her friends in Spain. It's more, it's more important to her than being here today. It's also second to my children, who also couldn't be here today. Because I didn't want them here. Who wants to look after a seven-year-old and one-year-old twins on their own? Not me. Honestly, it is one of the biggest honours in my life. You give me... Now, nah, you've gone above and beyond for me in the time you have known me. Even if it's a quick call, just to say how me and the boys are. Having me around for tea, or just to beat your kids up. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, Jeff, you've been an amazing role model to me. You've guided me more than you'll ever know, and I have more, much respect for you, despite you being a blue. Yay! The shit get over it, it to be <laughs> You're a great dad, a great family man, and you've been an amazing husband to your beautiful bride. You and Vicky haven't had it easy in the last few years, but the strength you found to carry on is admirable. So, I love you both, thank you for the honour today. I wish you all the happiness in the world, and I can't think of a better couple suited for each other. So please be upstanding. to the bride and groom. I'll pass you over now to Chris C.O.G. Yeah. If this wasn't nerve wracking enough, no one told me that was going to be in my face. And I've got to follow Aaron. Like an encore I didn't even ask for. Although I didn't, I was expecting a few more people. It's got to be at least 650 at a night, do it, it? Anyway, I've never introduced myself. My name's Chris, I'm the second best man. Although, no one's realised that by now. You quite frankly, you're a moron. And the vast majority of this is going to go over your head. Um, now, the people who do know me will tell the people who don't two things. Number one, I'm not very funny. And number two, I'm the last person in the world who put their hand up to do this. <laughs> However, when I was doing my research for this speech, I found out it should be between 30 35 minutes. So, good luck. <laughs> Everyone, sell in. Let's do it. We've got the doors. Now, believe it or not, I've actually looked forward to this moment ever since Jeff asked me to be his best man, all that, 34, 34 days ago. <laughs> Uh, mainly because it was the first time I've been out speaking his presence for five minutes without being interrupted. Not that I'm saying Jeff's loud, but he does break one of the fundamental laws of physics that light travels faster than sound. Because with Jeff, you definitely see him before you hear him. I'm just going to 
is for later, see the speech, because usually at this point in proceedings, he's disappeared off home with a taxi, bladded. Has anyone who went to his 40th birthday party can attest to? Oh, no, I was drinking pure vodka in it in the house before I left. And 16 Desperados, pure JD in it. <laughs> Thanks for those who just laughing. <laughs> now, I've only known Jeff for about five, six years. So I've not got any stories from him back in the day, nicking cars, taking drugs, or whatever other, whatever other shenanigans in I was believing he used to get up to. <laughs> out, there, out, there, out there on the mean streets of Gorton, or was it Levenshoe, or Dundee, or Northern Ireland, or Germany? I never can keep up with the Chronicles of Jeff, circa 1976 to 2000. So what I will do is I'll tell everyone a story about the first time I ever met Jeff, which I think sums up both sides of his character perfectly. But there I was, sat in work. I think it was my second or third week on my new team. Didn't know anyone, quiet as a mouse. And all of a sudden, in balls, this big mank whirlwind. Sort of like a cross between Johnny Vegas, Brian Blessed, <laughs> in his Night Air Max 95s. He's knocked off Lacoste Polo from Cheetah Mill Market. Went fresh back to his latest six month stint off on a sip. <laughs> Definitely not his last. But, uh, we'll get onto his arse. And later. Anyway, I was trying to get the upcoming Saturday off work to go to the City United game at the Etihad. And I got a ticket in the ballot, away end, absolutely buzzing. Anyway, Jeff gets wind of this. Comes up to me, and the first words that he ever said to me were, Yeah, mate, I don't know you in that, but if I see you on Saturday, I'm going to put a brick in your face, mate. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, I thought, this guy is an utter... <laughs> so if you'd have said to me five years ago I'd be up here doing this today, I'd have thought you were crazy. Anyway, I think I had the last laugh four days later when Van Persie bent in a free kick in the last minute. Oh, yeah. What else did? today. Yeah, we won't talk about that. <laughs> so while that sums up one side of his character, the words he said to me next sums up the other side of his character. Because once I'd sort of give it a nervous laugh, pray that he go and sit somewhere else, he said to me, listen though mate, if you're struggling for a lift on Saturday, let me know. Because I'm driving and I'll have space for you. And I think that sums up the other side of Jeff's character. Because stood up there at the altar today, and sitting here to my right, he's one of the most caring, down-to-earth, genuine, funny people that I've ever met. And I'm just glad for Jeff's sake, that Vicky agreed to marry him. <laughs> Although we'll give him this. Although he likes to be the centre of attention, and we all know that, the man will go to extreme lengths for a laugh. At the time we were sat in work once, I think it had been someone's birthday, and there was balloons stuck to the desk with those like sticky tape. Jeff pulls one off, walks over to me, sticks it to his hand. Yeah, Chris, check this out. Yeah, it's good that, mate. Okay. <laughs> nah, but, but Chris, seriously. I've seen it, mate, yeah? Well, well done. No, but Chris, look. <laughs> Finally cracked and burst out laughing. Then he moved on to Oasis, who was sat next to me. Oasis, Oasis, check this out. <laughs> yeah, 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 well done. Does it again? I kid you not. He did not stop until he made all ten people on our banker desks laugh. He was doing impressions of the union rep Dave Wrigley's The Elephant Man. <laughs> sure, it'd be funny, but it just is. Getting a group email at work, getting all the recipients and reading everyone's name backwards, it shouldn't be funny, but it just is. Saying 90s footballers' names in Northern Irish accent for a week straight, it just it shouldn't be funny, but it is. Ask him to tell him a sentence, and he's going to type it on his keyboard without looking at it. <laughs> and then reading out whatever gibberish that he's written in a slightly racist Eastern European accent. This should be funny, but just is. 
And that is why Jeff is in the top 20 funniest people I know. <laughs> I speak to on a daily basis. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up now because I think everyone wants to just crack on, get pissed. Um, all jokes aside, I couldn't be happier for both of you. Vicky, you look beautiful as you always do. Uh, I remember when I used to live on my own, um, Vicky used to make tea for me two, three times a week, maybe. She used to still send me home in summer wear boxes full of lasagna, bolognese, chilli. Uh, I'd like to think myself as their fourth child after Brody, Aaron and Scott. Uh, and I love them both, uh, and you both better breathe that shit in and enjoy that because you both know you'll never ever hear me say those words ever again. And that was hard for me, so. So if everyone would raise the glasses, I'd like to propose a toast to my favourite newlyweds, the Jack and Vera Duckworth of Crosscroft Village, Jeff and Vicky, Mr and Mrs Sharp. Time. Can we hear it for the newlyweds? Jeff and Vicky, come on, make some noise! And just before the music starts up again, your food is now served, so please, everybody, make your way out. And